Hello, everyone. Just last month, uh, I saw on the web a very interesting article by a man named Schumacher, who talked about the uh, demoralizing rise of depression uh, in our country. And he said that most of this is being misdiagnosed, that it isn't really depression. It's the word that I used before. It's demoralization. And uh, that civilization wide, we're going through some kind of crisis, which has often been called a spiritual crisis. And at the heart of that crisis is a severe lack of meaning, which is why I was so excited about that story, that how the youth in the West Bank were able to drop drug taking, which you can imagine this is a powerful addiction, and we're going to meet with that term again. They were able to drop that when they got their hands on something meaningful to do. And I'm leading up to the point, which I'm sure will not surprise any of you, that I think that nonviolence is the most meaningful thing that we can do. And in that sense, again, it constitutes the most effective, the most efficient and powerful solution to all of the problems that we're facing. So uh, I wanted to uh, give you a, a recent quote that I heard from a remarkable individual and then read two quotes uh, that are not quite as recent from uh, people that I recorded in the book. The recent one is from a really remarkable fellow. I'm right now in the process of trying to get in touch with him. His name is uh, Ali Abu Awad, not related to Mubarak Awad to my knowledge, but he is a Palestinian and uh, uh, suffered very much in the occupation. He was severely wounded. Uh, he and his mother were imprisoned for a while. And tragically enough, uh, his brother was killed. And he was a, a fighter. He was fighting the Israelis with the conventional, with the normal means. But he went to a meeting one time where Israelis who were having a similar deprivation, they had lost a loved one, and Palestinians like himself, who had lost loved ones, were sharing stories. And he made such a remarkable, simple observation. He said it was the first time that he ever saw Israelis cry. And that touched him. It rehumanized the Israelis in his eyes. And he completely changed around to nonviolent resistance. He renounced armed struggle and started an organization, which my friends tell me now has something like 10,000 people in it. But he said a remarkable thing in the course of a TED talk that he actually gave in Jerusalem, TEDx. And what he said was, I define nonviolence as the art of being a human being. The art of being a human being, which is what gives it such great depth of meaning for us. Now, uh, if we turn back to the era when search was published, and I'm happy to say this is already no longer true, but a research program surveyed the brightest young people in the United States. It found them overwhelmingly materialistic with an unprecedented concern with money, power, and status, and big declines involving altruistic interests and social concerns. At the moment, those young people, and we now call millennials, have been reawakened. So I'm happy to say that this isn't true anymore. But it does show us that without some sense of agency, some sense of dignity, some sense of meaning and purposeful work, uh, people sink into a very bad state indeed. And that nonviolence is probably the most efficient way to get all of those things, dignity, meaning, and purposeful work. Uh, Nonviolence has taken the form called protective accompaniment in many parts of the world, where trained people, often volunteers, go into areas of serious conflict where certain individuals have received death threats, credible death threats, and accompany them. They just stay with them 24-7, and they're in touch with the wider world, so they're like putting eyes and ears on those people. And it's been remarkably effective in preventing the assassination of these people. Peace Brigades International was the group that carried this out most systematically in Central America. 
And one of my friends uh, from Marin County here was with PBI that went into a village in Nicaragua to document low intensity conflict uh, and see what the Hondurans based, uh, the Contras based in Honduras were doing in Nicaragua. And when they came back and debriefed, they realized that every village they had gone to had not experienced violence while they were there. And so they decided they needed to go back. And it was terrifying. And so I asked Sue, who, you know, just Marin County health worker, uh, I, I said, Sue, why aren't you scared? And she said that she was terrified until she got back on the ground. And was, she was working with an organization called uh, Witness for Peace. And how come she wasn't afraid? The only way I can explain it is I felt I was in the hands of God. Not safe, not that I wouldn't be hurt, but that I was where I was supposed to be doing what I was supposed to be doing. Let me emphasize that. It's not that nonviolence gives you a guarantee that you won't be hurt. You're being hurt anyway, right? You're just now using that hurt, that risk of hurt, for in a more effective way. And then she makes an additional point that I want to leave you with uh, today. Uh, I was where I was supposed to be, doing what I was supposed to be doing, and this can be addictive. Maybe that's why we kept going back. So once again, we have stumbled upon a force which is as powerful as the addictive force of drugs. So let's let that sink in and we'll move on further with a constructive program and especially in the form of restorative justice next time.